I remember, too, a summer when peace and war battled for possession of the creek and for all of Florida. The conflict was grave for us. The enemy was the Mediterranean fruit fly. We are at the home of Marjorie Kennan Rawlings. The passage we just heard is from her 1942 book called Cross Creek. She was describing her experience and that of her neighbors here in North Florida with an outbreak of the Mediterranean fruit fly in 1929. By that time, the med fly had already been on the march for over 100 years. From its native home in equatorial Africa, it had spread to the countries of North Africa and Southern Europe adjacent to the Mediterranean Sea. From there, it continued its spread to South America, to Australia, and Hawaii. In each of those places, its effect on agriculture was devastating. And in each of those places, medfly continues to wreak havoc even to this day. In Florida, however, the State Plant Board and the U.S. Department of Agriculture made a determined effort to eliminate this pest. And remarkably, they're successful. For the first time ever, the Mediterranean fruit fly was eradicated from an area it had newly invaded. Since then, Florida has continued to be a leader in the ongoing battle against invasive fruit fly pests from around the world. I am here in a healthy Florida orange grove, part of our thriving agricultural industry that contributes $97 billion annually to Florida's economy. Florida, of course, is famous for its citrus products such as oranges and grapefruit. Recently, a new initiative, the Citrus Health Response Program, was developed specifically to protect this important crop from an onslaught of plant diseases and insect pests, including fruit flies. However, not only citrus is subject to fruit fly infestation. Almost any fruit you can imagine is infested by some type of fruit fly someplace in the world. For an example, a very serious pest of papaya is called a papaya fruit fly. Similarly, there is an apple maggot fly, a cherry maggot fly, blueberry maggot fly, and peach fruit flies. Not only what we normally think of as fruits are subject to fruit fly infestation. There are a number of different fruit flies called melon flies, for example, that are very serious pests of squashes, watermelons, cantaloupes, cucumbers, pumpkins, and the like. These fruit flies tend to have a limited set of target fruits that they search out to infest. There are other fruit flies that are highly adaptive generalists that can attack a large variety of different fruits. These widespread and abundant pests often go by regional names such as the oriental fruit fly or the Mexican fruit fly. The Mediterranean fruit fly is the most adaptive of all. It is able to infest over 250 different types of fruits these include our big industry crops such as oranges and grapefruit, but also many types of fruits you might never imagine. These include hot peppers and the coffee cherries in tropical countries from which we get our coffee beans. Most of the important pests that we intercept over and over again in Florida tend to be these generalist species. Their ability to infest almost any type of fruit or vegetable virtually ensures that they will be able to find a suitable breeding habitat regardless of the place or the season in which they arrive. As we have seen, there are many different types of fruit flies and many different types of fruits that they may infest. Where the basic life cycle of all fruit flies is very similar. The fruit fly life cycle begins here. A female goes searching for an appropriate host plant. This is a ripe fruit or green fruit, depending on the fly and the plant, but it's a healthy fruit on the tree. The female has an ovipositor, which is like a hypodermic needle. This allows her to pierce through the skin of a fruit and lay eggs into the fleshy interior. She may lay one or many eggs into a single fruit. The eggs are tiny, only one or two millimeters long and not likely to be noticed. The eggs hatch in a few days to produce the larval stage, sometimes called worms or maggots. This is the feeding stage and the real problematic stage as far as people are concerned. The first larval stage is just as small as the egg and equally unlikely to be noticed. However, as the larvae feed, 
they tunnel through the fruit, growing bigger and bigger, and leaving an expanding trail of damaged and decaying fruit pulp behind them. At this point, the consumer would see an obviously wormy and inedible fruit. By the time that larvae are full grown, the fruit may be so heavily damaged that it will have dropped from the tree. The larvae exit the fruit and burrow into the leaf litter or into the soil to transform to the pupal stage. The pupa is like a small cocoon in which the larval stage transforms into the adult form. The length of time to make the transformation depends on the season and the temperature. This stage typically lasts a week to 10 days in warm weather. Finally, we see the adult stage once again. Both males and females need a source of food and water and several days to several weeks to become sexually mature. A single mating event may allow the female to fertilize all of the eggs that she oviposits during the remainder of her life. Flies may live up to several months and females may oviposit daily, producing hundreds or even thousands of eggs in a lifetime. Fruit flies may breed continuously when host fruits are available and temperatures are accommodating. For example, in warm lowland Hawaii, the Mediterranean fruit fly has a life cycle of less than 30 days and more than 12 generations occur per year. As I mentioned earlier, the larvae are the problem stage in the life cycle, as this is the feeding stage in which the fruit or vegetable is destroyed. These very early immature stages, the eggs and larvae, are a big problem in another sense too, as these are the stages in which these pests may be moved great distances from an infested area to a fly-free area. Fruit which contains only eggs or early larval end stages appear perfectly sound. They may be commercially harvested from groves or orchards or picked from dooryard trees, then moved across state or national boundaries or even between continents in a matter of hours. Eggs hatch and larvae continue to develop whether the fruit is on the tree or on the grocery store shelf. Once the infested fruit has traveled to a new area, development through larval, pupal, and adult stages all proceed as usual. As there is such a variety of fruits and vegetables from around the world that are brought into Florida every day, there is ample opportunity for many exotic and destructive fruit fly pests to hitchhike into Florida along with them. The Division of Plant Industries fruit fly detection and monitoring programs are so important because of the ease and frequency with which fruit flies travel.